All right, we are on our third day working on assignment three. So I'm going to go right to it in Canvas under assignments and where we post it. And there are three components to turning this in, and today is the deadline for it by 11.59 tonight. The three components are your rough storyboard sketch, your finished GIF animation, or finished wherever you are today, and then your refined storyboard. Wait to do your refined storyboard until you're happy with your finished GIF animation, or at least as happy as you're willing to be before moving on to the next project, right? Animating is, there's always things that can be improved, and there's a reason it takes more than a week to do it professionally. Uh, remember that there is this mentorship presentation linked in the assignment. If you want another viewpoint on how to use the tools to make a simple kind of animatic. This is by a past digital honors student. And it, it helps because this tutorial is all using PhotoP and then using the GIF maker uh, site, easygif.com maker that we're gonna use to actually animate our work. So just another viewpoint for that. So far, I have posted my inspirations, the asset from earlier in the class that I designed, my exercise two emoji, my rough storyboard. This is the only thing that's required that I've posted so far, the rough storyboard. I'm gonna open that up and keep it just open in the side. Because that's gonna be helpful. It shows me kind of where I am, where I'm going. And then I have these two files. I have my assets file and I have my stage file, assets and stage. They are both PSD files. I'm going to open those up in PhotoP. And just one at a time, I'm going to open up my assets first, drag that in. And then I'm going to say file open and open up my stage. Yes, bless you. And we're in kind of allergy season now, right? Remember, I have hand sanitizer, masks, and Kleenex right up here if anyone needs it. All right. So if I open up now the stage, notice I give them a different name, and I also give them a different color before I start, so they're easy to find. But as soon as I save them, that little color dot is going to go away. So that's the way I see that I've saved them out of PhotoP. I start with the stage because this shows me the frames I have so far, what I completed my last work day on this, right? And usually if I worked as an animator, uh, the first part of my work day would always be reviewing what I worked on the day before with critiques from, from coworkers and from the art director. You might do that for an hour to an hour and a half. And before you start on your new work for the day, you clean up this, the, the critiques you got on your previous day's work, you know? So you can ask yourself, we don't have endless time for this. We're not working for a professional company. We're just trying to learn the tools for ourselves. You can ask yourself or just remind yourself of what you've been doing and kind of the timing of it, because now we're trying to get into that same mode and adding on. So, I'm basically between these two frames right now in the story. He's sucking in the fish, and that's the last animation frame. So now it's actually pretty easy because I don't need the fish anymore, and I don't need this specialized asset with the open mouth. I can just go right back to the, the cat with its eyes. So the mouth closes, and now I'm going to play with the color of the cat. And because I lost some assets of the cat's head, I'm going to bring that cat asset back in. And that cat asset is from exercise two. This is why it's always nice to know that you can make your own assets. You can also find them.
Actually, I could even bring in a different version, maybe. Is it different? Let's see. Well, oh, it looks like it's the same. I was thinking maybe I can bring in an earlier version. Could be interesting. No, they're not as good. You have so many options. All right. So I'm going to bring in that new asset. It comes in as a smart object. I have to place it, right? So I'm going to scale it, get it sized. I can take its opacity down. This is all because I, I accidentally flattened my assets. Remember, Option Command T for free transform. Get it positioned. And then I want to take its opacity down. Oh, this is going to be tricky to think through. Let's see. Oh, no, this is what I want. Awesome. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the lasso and select it around this asset. And then... I'm going to move that selection to my my cat here with its eyes removed, remember? And I'm going to duplicate that out. But first I have to invert it. Select inverse. This is also I can change and then command J to duplicate it. Also, I can have the cat on its own layer, like this, where I can change its colors. Oh, I'll put the eyes on top. There we go. Okay. So this is the one that's going to modify. And because I want the color to change to a sickly green, I'm going to already build that in. So I'm going to duplicate it, this cat asset. I don't need this smart object anymore. And on the duplicate, I'm going to use my image adjustments. I can do this a few different ways, but this is just a really fun, easy way. And I'm going to go right to hue saturation. Usually I do levels, color balance to kind of make something match. Here it already matches. I just want to mess with the hue saturation. So I'm going to change the hue. And I'm going to do something called colorize, which will push everything into one hue. Now, the eye looks all funky, so I'm going to fix that. But first, let me just pick the hue I want. I'm going to go from the back. I want it to be a sickly green. So maybe kind of like that. And then what I can do is use opacity and blend that onto my cat. So it's going to get, you know, not sick, more and more sick, the more opacity I use. Very simple, using that slider, just like I faded the cat in. Now I got to fix the eyeballs first. And the way I'll do that is by simply copying them from the merged layer here. So I'm going to say Option, select both of these, holding down Shift, why not? And then say Option, Layer, Merge Layers, while holding down Option. So now I've got a combined head here. On that combined head, I'm just going to steal the eyes. It's a little creepy with a cat head, taking the eyes out, but that's just what I'm going to do. So grab that one, duplicate it, go back, and I'm going to actually steal the selection with the magic wand, and then invert it, and then move that selection. You can also move selections, and grab the other eye. 
so that the eyes don't change color. But the rest of the cat does. So what is this going to look like? I have to get locked. <laughs> okay. So it's going to look like this. You see how the eyes will stay yellow, but everything else will go kind of greenish, even his whiskers. Now, if I really wanted to be picky about it, I could cut out his nose and have that not change, have his whiskers not change. It's just how detailed I want to get. And yeah, I just, I don't care that much <laughs> at this point. So there's always new things you can do, but this will be enough to change him from being straightforward to being looking sickly. So this is where I left off. So I need to turn that background back on. And then this is the cat looking forward, right? And that's a frame that's ready. So how do I do it? I'm going to save it before I flatten it because I've built new assets now, all this, the sickly green potential. And now I'm going to say layer flatten, very scary. I can see it in my history. Select all, edit copy. As soon as I've copied, I go to before uh, flatten image in the history. So I get all my layers back. Then go to my stage, go to my top layer in my stage and I say edit paste. So I have my next frame. And then I can hit command S to save. What you don't want to do is to save after you flattened because then you lose all your assets. All right, so now turn all this stuff back on. Turn the eyes on. Rebuild my last frame. Save it. Now I start making him green. And it's going to be super simple. I'm just going to take this opacity. I can take as many frames as I want. But I'm going to make it go pretty quick. So I'm going to go in four frames from 0 to 100. So my first is going to be 25% opacity. And his eyes are going to stay perfectly still. Because that will focus us more on the color change. And he's going to look kind of inwardly concerned. That's my hope. So what do I do? Save it. <laughs> Say layer. Flatten image. Select all. Edit copy. Go before I flatten the image in my history. Then move to my stage. And edit paste. I'll do it with shortcuts the next time. So there we have our first slight color change. He has kind of a green aura around him. And you can save your stage as you go. I'm at 22 frames. Now I'm going to change the eyes a little bit. I'm going to actually have them go this way first. Yeah, let's have him flick this way first. Oh, you know what? Maybe even they even widen up a little bit. Let's see if I like how that looks. From this to this. And you can do Command O to center everything so that they match. The eyes just get a little big. Does that work? Yeah, kind of. All right. So now I just need more green. So I'm just going to take this opacity from 25 up to 50. Now I think I, I'm going to turn off those eyes so it's more directional. Ah, I can't decide. All right, I'll go with this, see how it looks. So save it before I flattened it. Layer flatten. Select all, Command A. Copy, Command C. Move before you flattened it. Then go to your stage and paste, Command V. And so the eyes widen up.